Los Varacas, guys. You know, I'm really pleased and honored to be at the Game On event. It's our first event uh, in Lithuania that we are attending as Wargaming, you know, and it's really great to see so many common souls to us, you know, so passionate about the games. Word of, uh, word of uh, explanation at first. Uh, Tom Putski, that meant to have this presentation, the speech, couldn't attend due, due to flight reasons. So I'm really sorry on his behalf and I decided maybe uh, it will be good that I can say those uh, few words. I know uh, it's a last presentation, so I try to be accurate, few, uh, fast and hopefully interesting. So today's topic is a world of tanks from niche to global phenomenon. Uh, how game from Belarus, how game about something weird like tanks really, in a general uh, thinking, changed into something really sexy that it's appealing to millions of players worldwide. First things first, is anyone plays World of Tanks or any of uh, our other titles? Lovely. So at least it's good that we have some pros uh, here. So long story short, w uh, what is Wargaming? We are in general game development and publishing company. I'll go to that a little bit later. Our motto is we deliver legendary online games globally with passion. All those words used in, the, in this motto have a meaning and uh, I do hope that during the course of this presentation you'll get uh, what each of the words means. Firstly, to show you how uh, how successful and what is real a phenomenon of uh, World of Tanks, some uh, basic stats, so maybe not all of you know, but we are a very seasoned uh, developer and a publisher, we are uh, 19 years on the market at the moment, and we started in 1998 uh, from four people, right now we do hire all, all, across, the, all, all across the globe, sorry, more than 40,000 uh, 40, employees, and we started with World of Tanks uh, in 2010 with uh, mm, registered users of 22,000 and right now we have in all our titles more than 180 millions of uh, players. During this course of action, during our operations, we won numerous awards. I won't be going through uh, any of this uh, because it could take a lot of time and just <laughs> I do hope that it's not over and we'll get another, uh, another awards as well. But how it all started. I believe this uh, quotation from the ACDC, ACDC uh, song uh, says it all. It's a long way to the top because, as I said, we started in 1998 and the first iteration of a World of Tanks was in 2010, meaning we were 20, uh, 12 years uh, on the market with other uh, titles, so generally nothing was given and granted for us all we did, it was by our passion and our hard work and our devotion to the project. Right here, you may see our global uh, PR uh, man, Mr. Uh, Arthur, uh, that, you know, he was jacket of all trades. We were going from one publisher to another with a World of Tanks project and everybody was like, Tanks? Really? Come on, guys. No, sorry. It's something like very small. We don't want it, you know. So that's why we started to be our own publisher. From, uh, as I said, 1998, it was, uh, Wargaming was founded by Wargaming and uh, Victor Kisley and a couple of uh, students. And uh, firstly, uh, we uh, delivered uh, two types of games. First of all, it was the strategies. As our Victor Kisley, our CEO says, we do games for people that like to think, that like to think tactical, strategical, for smart people. So first of all, we started with uh, strategy titles like DBA Online, like Massive Assault, Galactic uh, Assault, Order of War. It was really our first shot in terms of uh, being uh, noticed by uh, some uh, uh, worldwide publisher. It was a uh, game was published by uh, Square Enix. And through all those years, the second thing was that online games was our main point of interest. So we wanted to have online titles. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And uh, so, yes, so back in the days, online wasn't as popular as it is now, so you can have online everywhere, even here, you know, uh, very fast. Uh, 
and uh, also uh, you couldn't operate without the publishers. Nowadays, the situation is way better. You have lots of uh, programs for developers. Developers can publish uh, by themselves games. It's easy to get on the market. You just need to have a cool idea and how to, uh, and how to do it. Uh, so nobody wanted World of Tanks. And the funny, uh, f funny thing is that World of Tanks, uh, in the very beginning of the prototype uh, phase, it wasn't uh, about tanks. It was fantasy MMO title with dwarves, elves, uh, stuff like this, uh, you know, the gnomes. But at some point, guys were just thinking, oh, there is a lot of fantasy MMO titles, you know. We won't be first, we won't be unique, we will be just another title similar, maybe quality will be good, but it will be similar, we can't do something uh, uh, brand new with that. That's why they uh, thought what is interesting in terms of CIS, in terms of Eastern Europe, in general, in terms of Europe and uh, worldwide, so they figured it out, so maybe we'll switch some races to tanks. You know, so for example, like we have, uh, let's say, humans, it was more like uh, medium tanks, dwarves as a heavy hitters, it, it's now uh, like a he heavy tank, or for example, elves as a good snipers, you know, because they use bows in general, so uh, it was resembled as uh, tank destroyers. So, in the, uh, so, we launched this title by our own, uh, our own hands, the guys done uh, tremendous job going from one country to another, meeting up with the media and explaining why this game is cool and eventually they succeeded. You know, in CIS uh, it was a very good uh, reception and so year after it was published in Europe, it was launched in the US, it was launched in Asia and it boomed, really. As you may see, those numbers are growing year by year, but as you may see here, offices and projects, it's not that, that if you have a success, you need to work on that, you know, it couldn't be like this, okay, so I have a success and now I'll capitalize and that's it, you know, you just need to continuously work on the title, like for example with World of Tanks, uh, since uh, its uh, launch we had like more than 73 uh, updates of the game giving uh, new modes, giving uh, new tanks, keeping the interest and all other stuff I will tell a little bit later on. So I don't want to now going through all of this, but you may see it's a really hard work and the thing and the strategy behind it, no, nothing like uh, it was just a success, some lucky thing. So in general, what do we do? We are wargaming first our core title is of course World of Tanks, but uh, as well we are half of the publisher and half of the developer because we can say that almost a half of our company are uh, talented people, uh, developers from all around the globe. You know, so for each title there is a separate division of developers working solely on the title, you know, so to keep interest of the players from the media. And also what we do is Wargaming.net service. This is a service that you can create one account and enjoy any of our titles and uh, you can share some resources between one and the other. So, in terms of World of Tanks, uh, this brand is right now transposed to almost everything that uh, plays games. Of course, uh, World of Tanks PC is, uh, is our crown jewel, but also we are on the Xbox 360, Xbox PS4, and World of Tanks Blitz is an incarnation for the mobile. But it's not a simple port, you know, so it's not like, okay, we have a uh, regular game, and okay, let's just copy it one-to-one -one in terms of, uh, uh, and uh, release it on the mobile. Uh, the um, gameplay, uh, in fact, is uh, shorter. There is a uh, lower tanks uh, in each team because uh, to match with uh, mobile audience, with mobile, uh, I don't know uh, what makes a good mobile title. We also have World of Warships, and this is what it goes in terms of legendary. What we are trying to do, apart from having really good games that are cherished by media, by, uh, by uh, players, you can see it, for example, on the Metacritics, for example, uh, we try to deliver something unique. It's like, for example, with World of Warships, we think and we believe that we reinvented the naval battles in, uh, uh, in the gaming, because, of course, there were some games 
that was uh, uh, that, uh, before uh, World, of Time, uh, World of Warships, though uh, this uh, gameplay that World of Warships presented, it's really, it's really uh, unique and even with uh, aircraft carriers, for example, it, translated, it is more like RTS game rather than, for example, playing Fast and Furious uh, uh, d d d Fast, uh, Fast, and Fu Fast and Furious, uh, for example, Destroyers, right? which is my favorite, in fact. And the third, to conclude, to conclude our trilogy, World of Warplanes, so our idea was to conquer the land with the tanks, the seas with the, uh, with the ships, and the uh, air in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, World of Warships. But that's not all. What, what we are trying to do, basing on the World of Tanks, that uh, it's really a successful title, we also would like to share the knowledge and share the expertise with other developers. We have a program, Wargaming Alliance, which is uh, uh, more uh, related to the third-party publishing. You know, so if you have a game, uh, you can come to us, show it to us, and we shall see what can we do uh, with it. Uh, it's very flexible, you know, so it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, case uh, dependable. So we had a presentation uh, and we have a representative here of WG Alliance. So let's do, have, let's do hope that uh, it will be really fruitful and maybe we will uh, do some cooperation with uh, Lithuanian developers. And those are two examples. Uh, how we do it, Master of Orion, so reincarnation of, uh, reincarnation of a legendary brand. The thing is, maybe I will take a two minutes more for this presentation just to tell you that, for example, uh, License was bought because of the Victor Kisley was really loving this title and he played it in, the, in his youth days. So it wasn't like kind of a let's just buy it because it's, for example, available the license. It was just, uh, I don't know how, uh, how to express it, you know, but he liked it and he said like, okay, we can buy this license and then we will think of how to recreate it and then NGD Studios from Argentina came to us with a working prototype and say, said, guys, we are working on that, tell us what you think, and we thought, okay, it's really nice. You know, so this cooperation was also based uh, both on publishing and develop, uh, the, the development, we also help in terms of development, and now we have a Total War Arena, which is created, created solely by Creative Assembly, and uh, it's a... Um, Another incarnation of Total War brand, which I do hope you also know because it's really a popular one and very established one. And in here it will be a free-to-play title uh, and also we, what we would like to do is to deliver unique gameplay. Which translates to that here you have 10 versus 10 battles, each of uh, the players can control three, maybe not units, it's better to call for example squads. And in each squad, you can have up to 100 warriors, you know, so it will be really massive in terms of, uh, in, in terms of troops uh, battles, but of course there will be way more than just uh, regular uh, soldiers. Okay, so yes. World of Tanks, it's basing on history very strongly. Right, you know, so uh, of course you have a prototypes there, but uh, and the real tanks. But uh, in general, it was all invented by uh, engineers that was working on the tanks. And what we would like to do is to give uh, give it more to uh, to the people and to the to the market uh, while supporting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, historical and adventures. We can say, like for example, Spitfires in Birma projects, so we do a lot with uh, historians, with uh, also we can say adventures for example, or with uh, milita uh, uh, military personnel, we are doing a lot by educate. we try to educate in the modern way, so if the game is uh, basing on history, so maybe it's a very good starting point to, uh, you know, interest uh, your son, yourself in history more, because we do believe history is really important and it's really good to know, good to know it, I mean, your country and uh, of course, uh, worldwide history. And to, to have this kind of educational approach, we do a lot in terms of new technology. So we do, do AR, we are doing VR, uh, for example, for a tank fest. So the biggest uh, tank, uh, event, uh, I believe worldwide, mm, it's in the uh, Bovington in UK, uh, we wanted to have a collection of the tanks. 
uh, the Tiger tanks. But the one, one tank wasn't available, it was a Sturm Tiger, so we recreated it in the virtual reality. So if you wear, for example, HoloLens helmet, you can see it uh, real size, and uh, the, there is a video with a narrator uh, telling about each part of a tank and how it operates, how it shoots, you know? So we are trying to educate as well in the modern, in the moder modern and interesting, uh, interesting fashion. Okay, we do share knowledge. We are here, for example. Uh, uh, we also uh, both, we create uh, game, de uh, game developers conferences like Foreseen Kiev, for example, and we do attend a lot. Our representatives, uh, they attend a lot of the uh, press, uh, other uh, game development uh, uh, conferences. We are also there where the gamers are, because the gamers are our top priority, sorry for that. So we are present at, for example, Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show. Right now we are first time at Game On, and I really do hope it won't be a last, because we really like it here, liked what we saw. Also, with word of thanks, to keep the interest in uh, title, uh, also in 2013 we've changed uh, the model to free to win. So. It is translated like this, so uh, any expense uh, won't, won't give you uh, this much of the advantage on the battlefield that, you know, it's like a pay-to-play. No, because in, uh, in, uh, to be in eSports, it has to be equal terms. We have our own league, we have our own uh, big tournaments, grand finals. For example, it was three times in Warsaw, and then uh, last uh, incarnation was in Moscow, and we gathered like dozens of thousands of uh, people on the spot, and also uh, millions uh, watching streams and likewise. And what I would like to stress is that we are talking about the one game only, right? You know, so in general, it's not uh, like there is uh, like 10 games, 20 games, it's only about word of tanks, you know? So it clearly sees that, yeah, this is how we do it. It's our uh, more informal, uh, <laughs> informal uh, saying, and also it's a from a, a one of the rock songs. Uh, so yes, this is, this is how we do it. And in general, just to wrap things up, what our key pillars are, are the quality games. You, ha you need to have unique gameplay and be right here, right now. So both creating the trends, but also follow the latest trends. But all we are trying to do is we are trying not to be one of the many, like uh, uh, we are just trying to be uh, by our own, by our own uh, ideas, because we do believe in that. For example, Grand Finals showed it uh, very clearly that going esports only uh, by us not attending, for example, uh, some major esports uh, events was a right choice. And there is one more thing that we cherish the most, it's the passion. The passion to the tanks, the passion to the uh, work we are doing, the passion uh, to be a gamers. We do play uh, our titles, of course, but we also play loads of other titles because you, usually we are gamers and we just love what we are doing. And I believe this last, uh, this last uh, word from uh, this uh, quotation at the beginning, I believe it's one of the most important, if not important, the most important, because you need to like and to love what you are doing and eventually you'll succeed. For example, majority of uh, uh, guys thinks about us like, okay, they started with World of Tanks, but no, as you may see, we were 12 years uh, already on the market before we got, uh, uh, got uh, this significant success that uh, allowed us to develop, but also not to forget our roots, who we are and why, you know? So thank you very much, or more, as we say, thank you very much internally, you know? So now I'm happy to answer your questions if uh, I'll be able to, or you can catch me later on as well. Thank you very much, guys. Achoo.